financial markets continue to watch events in Ukraine and the Middle East with a nervous eye. They do so from a humanitarian perspective, but also a selfish one because of the potential impact upon the oil price of those conflicts in particular. Higher oil prices are, in effect, a tax on consumers and corporations because they crimp the spending power of the former and increase the costs and eat into the cash flow and profits of the latter. Higher oil prices also filter through to inflation in so many ways, from the cost of fuel at the garage forecourt to food prices through shipping and freight bills, supermarket utility bills, and also input costs for fertilisers. After the dramatic collapse in 2020, when the oil price briefly went negative, as producers and buyers found themselves with excess supply and met worries about where they could store the stuff, crude has made a comeback, and it's done so potentially for three reasons. First, demand. The pandemic came and went, fiscal and monetary stimulus were applied, and the global economy has continued to grow. While we must consider the vested interests of the source, OPEC believes the world will consume 104.5 million barrels of oil a day this year, with a further increase to 106.3 million in 2025, a level some 6% above that seen in the pre-pandemic year of 2019. Second, supply. Sanctions on Iran and Venezuela, chaos in Libya and production cuts by OPEC and other major suppliers, notably Russia, have helped to restrict supply growth. Oil majors have also taken on board political and public pressure not to drill with as much vigour as before. Even though America's shale industry is doing a lot to take up the slack, note how capital investment and the overall capex to sales ratio across the West's seven super majors, BP and Shell in the UK, ExxonMobil, Conoco, Philips, Chevron in America, and any and Total Energies in Europe, well, it, that figure remains relatively subdued despite bumper profits. And those spending and capex to sales ratios include these super majors' investment in renewables as well as hydrocarbon exploration. And the third possible reason is geopolitics. Now, this takes us back to the sanctions, now easing perhaps, so far as Venezuela is concerned, the machinations of OPEC Plus and also the wars in Ukraine and Gaza. The latter continues to conjure up bad memories for some investors of the 1970s, when the Yom Kippur War of 1973 and the fall of the Shah in Iran in 1979 prompted oil price spikes and multiple waves of inflation in the West that were ultimately only really choked off by some big supply side reforms and particularly interest rates in the double digits. All of this then takes us to BP's first quarter results for 2024, which are due for release on Tuesday the 7th of May, a few days after Shell's figures. BP shares are more or less flat over the past year, albeit after a roller coaster ride. Oil price volatility, boardroom upheaval and the collapse of the natural gas price back to 2020's historic lows around $1.6 per million British thermal units, have all had a role to play there. So once we look at the numbers, analysts will home in on four headline figures. The first is underlying replacement cost profit. This is not a statutory figure, but it is one that irons out both any exceptional items and also the movement in value of the company's stocks and inventories of oil and gas. The consensus analyst forecast is for $2.9 billion in the first three months of 2024 not far below the results of the fourth quarter of 2023, but well down from the $5 billion earned in the first three months of last year. The second number to watch is net debt. BP has done an excellent job of cutting its borrowing since the terrible fright it received during the pandemic when oil and gas prices collapsed. Cost cuts, capex cuts and asset disposals have helped to cut the net debt pile to $18 billion from a peak of $51 billion in early 2020. Third number is capital investment or capex, and also the mix here between hydrocarbons and renewables. After spending $15.6 billion in 2023, BP has thus far steered the market to expect $16 billion in 2024. Finally, attention will switch to cash returns, which is shaped by profit, debt, cash flow, and capex. In 2023, BP paid up $4.8 billion in dividends and $7.9 billion in share buybacks. The dividend ended last year at 7.27 US cents a share per quarter, and Alice expects 7.6 cents a quarter on average this year. Well, the company has already announced a $3.5 billion buyback for the first half of the year. Add that to the forecast dividend, and BP's already expected to return $8.5 billion to shareholders this year, or some 8% of its current stock market valuation. I hope that you and your families are all keeping well. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you.